This is Jennifer Martinez, and welcome to L'Hopital's Rule. What is L'Hopital's Rule? It is a rule that helps you find limits. Yes, back to the first thing that we did in the beginning of calculus. But now we can find these limits using derivatives. So here's the rule that's listed in the book, uh, one of the versions of the rules. There's a more general version as well. If f and g are differentiable, and f of a equals g of a, which equals zero, that's important, and g prime of a does not equal zero, then you can say that the limit of this quotient f of x over g of x is the derivative evaluated at a of the numerator divided by the derivative evaluated at a in the denominator. Uh, the next little line here is just where um, the L'Hopital's name came from. It's actually a name of a French nobleman who wrote the first calculus text that you can see um, as a little note in the book. So let's look at the proof. So I'm going to start off by letting f and g be differentiable functions, where f of a equals g of a, which equals zero, and the derivative at a of g is not zero. So then I'm going to start with the right side here, because I know the definition of the derivative of each of these. So I'm going to look at f prime of a over g prime of a. So f prime of a, we know is the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h by our definition of derivative of the derivative. And g prime of a is similar down below here. But now, because of this bit, we know that these are zero. So you end up canceling those. So what you end up with is the limit as h goes to zero of just this term, f of a plus h over h, and the limit of the bottom is g of a plus h over h. Now the property of limits, like the limit of two quotients, is the um, limit of those two as long as um, they exist. Well, f of x is uh, differentiable, so that they're continuous, so these limits are fine. So we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of, now we just have the same expression, but with just with one limit. The h is cancel, so you end up with the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h over g of a plus h, which I realize is not exactly the same as that. So we're going to do a little change of variables. I'm going to let, because if we notice, x goes to a. We don't have h in there. So I'm going to let h equal x minus a. So as h goes to 0, we know that x minus a also goes to 0, or x goes to a. So making this a little smaller, now we can see we have x goes to a there. So now we have it. So this is the limit as x goes to a. Um, oh, what is a plus h? a plus h we know is x, if you add a to both sides there. And then the same with this. I can change this to a where, and we are done. So now we can go back and confirm all of our limits that we found in the first chapter without using a graph or a table, like for instance this one. So if we look at that, it does meet the conditions because f of x is equal to sine of x, and we know that f of 0 is sine of 0, which is 0. g of x is equal to x, and g of 0 is 0 as well. g prime of x is 1, and the derivative of 0 is not 0. All good. So the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x 
is, by L'Hopital's rule, the derivative of the top evaluated at zero divided by the derivative of the bottom evaluated at zero. We're not using quotient rule here. This is different. So we finally can just take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. We know that that is cosine. The derivative of the top is cosine of x, so that's cosine of zero. The derivative of the bottom we know is just one. So that is sine of zero is one, and we have it. You do have to be careful that you have these conditions, because if you have, for instance, this example, you would not use L'Hopital's rule. This does not exist, because we know that cosine of zero, cosine of um, f of a, right, where a is zero, is not zero. So we do not have that beginning condition that's in yellow there. So this one we know actually does not exist. Uh, because um, if you just plug that in, it would be 1 over 0. If we did the right side, that would be um, plus infinity. And the limit as h goes to 0 from the left, that would be negative values of 0. So this would be 1 over 0, but that would be negative infinity. And so you can see, therefore, our limit as h goes to 0 does not exist. Notice how I did not use L'Hopital's rule here because we didn't have those conditions, so we just have to find the limit the old-fashioned way when you don't have those conditions. There is a more general form to L'Hopital's rule because you might, when you go and do this process, you might, when you take the derivative, also have the derivative of the numerator f evaluated a equaling the derivative of f evaluated, or sorry, g evaluated a, both equaling zero. And if that's the case, you can use this more general form. Provided the right-hand side exists, you still need the same conditions. So again, on this one, we did not use the general form because here, when I took the derivative, it was not zero again. So we just repeat the process. So notice on the right side, there was no limit. But now with our new one, it is. So for example, let's look at this example. So let's let the numerator be the f of t and the denominator be the g of t. So therefore, when we plug in where our a is 0 in this case, this would be 1 minus 1 minus 0. That would work. This one, the derivative, not the derivative, just g of 0 is 0. So we do get these conditions. They're both continuous. Oh, sorry, they're both differentiable. And they are continuous as well. But let's go ahead now and apply this. So what we're going to do is this is the limit as t goes to 0 of the derivative of the top, which we know is e to the t, derivative of 1 is 0, minus 1 over 2t. And you can see the reason we didn't just evaluate it at 0, because if I plug in a 0 over here, this would be 0 over 0. It would still have that form. That would be e to the 1, 1 minus 1 is 0 over 0. So when that happens, we can do it again. So what is that equal to? The derivative of the numerator is e to the t. The derivative of the denominator is 2. Now we have to stop because the derivative um, at the bottom is not 0 anymore. So we can just say what the limit is. So if I plug that in, because everything's continuous, that's e to the 0 over 2, which is 1 half. And we got the answer to that limit. So you can repeat the process.